Howdy folks, Travis here, and uh, real quick what we're going to do is talk about the transitions of the, the cow puncher, uh, the cowboy uh, way of using equipment from cold starting all the way up to uh, a finished horse. And uh, I'm going to keep it real general, you know, just for this application of uh, getting the basics of understanding. And this is a lot different than uh, the buckaroo way of doing stuff, and then also the, the California's way of doing it. And I'm going to go kind of detailed a little bit, but still keeping it general at the same time. And, uh, and then I'll briefly talk on uh, the buckaroo system and the California's way of system. And I'm not going to do a deep dive. Uh, we'll bring a picture down and point out what's going on, because later on I'll be doing a lot more videos on those applications, okay? So normally on the cow puncher side of the house, what they'll start with is a rope halter leading a horse around because that's picked up a lot more popularity in the last 30 years. Might do a ride or two on that, but generally they'll start out on this piece of equipment. And once again, I've talked about this a little bit already. This is just uh, their version of Hackamore. It's real, uh, just a piece of uh, Team Roper style of uh, Bozell right there. And uh, I'm not going to go in detail because I've already done that a little bit. I will show it on a horse so you can kind of see why I don't use it. If you use it, hey, go ahead and use it. I'm not telling you different, all right? And since I'm on that subject, you'll see a lot of uh, people uh, changing the traditional way of the buckaroo to the cow puncher and back and forth blending stuff, okay? If you're not a traditionalist, that's okay, all right? That is you being a progressive, progressing your education, progressing uh, what tools you like to develop in your own horsemanship, you know, or horse mastership uh, technique, okay? I'm not one to judge you. Give it a try, if you don't like it, don't use it, okay? It's kind of like leadership. You're gonna take the tools you like from here, put it in, discard tools you don't like over there, and you're gonna develop your own horsemanship style, okay? Uh, if you're a traditionalist, obviously you're gonna stick with what you like to do off a of tradition of the buckaroo style, the California style, the cow puncher style, whatever it is, but there's nothing in the rule book that says, hey, I have to stay there, okay? And you'll see, I've traveled the country from the East Coast to the West Coast, from North to South in different countries, and I've seen a lot of blended styles. You're like, well, what's blended? I'll give you an example, okay? If you are a buckaroo style, you're probably going to use split reins, possibly on a snaffle bit. I know a lot of good buckaroos out there to do that, okay? Traditionalists are going to put a makate on it and use it. It's a blended style. Does it work? Absolutely. Okay, just use common sense with a lot of stuff. All right, so that's the end of my soapbox on that. All right, and I'm going to talk about the next thing. So after they finish doing a couple rides with the hackamore, what they'll normally do is, uh, not all people, but a lot of people, they'll go up to the next step, which is the side pole. The side pole is exactly that, all right? This has a lot of slop on it, and I'll show you on the horse. There's a lot of movement on there, and I'll talk about the reason why I don't like it, okay? And what they do is they do this half pole, and the half pole gets a little bit tighter around the muzzle of the horse. Now, this originally had a lot of the team rope and uh, rope all the way through it. I went ahead and had uh, a friend of mine go ahead and put some padding on it, because I don't like it uh, leaving marks on the nose of a horse. And, uh, and I don't use a, a side pole, so I don't think I do. But what I do use for riding, I guess I should clarify for riding, what I do use it for is I'm teaching the horse and driving them. I want them to understand driving. And I'll use side pole, side pole a lot uh, until 
they get comfortable and then I'll put them right into a snaffle bit, driving them with the drive lines, okay? So getting back to the side pole, what it is, is if I pull the split range to the right, the head's gonna turn that way. Same thing if I pull it to the left. If I pull it to the left, and that's why it's called side pull, the head's gonna go to the left. There's not gonna be a lot of develop of uh, vertical flexion in it, okay? But you could do doubling on it, you know, horseback, you do a lot of stuff with it, in general riding. You're just, it's just a tool, okay? So don't get wrapped around it. It is a tool, a lot of people use it. Uh, it is bitless to the next step. Right before, you're very comfortable teaching the leg aids, okay? Whatever you're riding with leg, leg aids, you're using this because you're trying to protect the mouth a little bit more. Then what they'll do is the next step, they'll go right up into a snaffle bit. And I'm not going, once again, talk about all the thousand different types of snaffle bits out there. But your general setup is a head stall, a snaffle, whether it be a, re a ring bit, egg butt, whatever. Uh, it's just a broken mouthpiece snaffle because you're teaching the horse if I turn <clears throat> if I grab the reins and I do an open rein, one pound of pull of my rein for my hand is one pound of pressure on this bit. Okay? And once again, this one is a Dutton. I guess I'll talk a little bit about it. And it's a donut ring, it's heavy, and it is a bar. Uh, and I'm not going to go into the applications, just know they generally move up to a snaffle bit. I'll probably show the differences in a lot of snaffle bits a little, a little bit later. Uh, most time the buck roll rolls, we'll just lose, use a loose ring snaffle or just uh, <clears throat> egg butt. We're not worried about, you know, bar stock. But then again, you got your blended people like I was talking about earlier. Some people play with this and be in the buckaroo tradition. As long as you understand the piece of equipment, it's kind of fun playing with them, all right? If you want to be a traditionalist, be a traditionalist. I'm not going to judge you. Be happy with yourself and your knowledge you're gaining, okay? Once you get the horse schooled up on a snaffle bit, the next step is move into a transition bit. What is a transition bit? Well, it could be a tom thumb bit, or it could be any other bit, because what you're going to do is introduce uh, chain strap, okay, this one being chained because we added shanks. That is what a tra transition bit is. You're adding shanks, okay. You're adding a chain to the bottom, or it might be just a piece of leather. This is creating leverage. We've transitioned for one where you might have a piece of leather, or in this case, uh, type 3 nylon, parachute cord, whatever you want to call it, all right, 550 cord. That's only to keep the bit from sliding out of the horse's mouth. This is used to create leverage, okay, on here. And your transition bits, they will have different sizes of shanks. Some will be shorter so you can slowly introduce it. This is considered a broken mouthpiece. It looks the same as this one, broken mouthpiece, but this is a snaffle. So if I pull on the reins, this could be a ratio of anywhere from 10 to 20 pounds. I put one pound of pressure on the rein, might be translate 10 pounds, 20 pounds, depending on the length of the shank of the bit, okay? That's why I don't call this a snaffle bit. It's a broken mouthpiece. It's not a snaffle bit. Now you go online and say, Travis, I see everywhere it's called a snaffle bit. It's not because technically, because you're introducing shanks. It's a broken mouthpiece okay a transition bit and that's what you're doing because they're familiar with the feel of this which gives them a little bit of level of comfort with this the difference is you're adding a little bit of shank now to it a little bit of pressure so you create pressure on top of the pole you create pressure underneath the chin because you got the chin strap here okay so this is elevation coming down this is helping with the chin to come in and this is helping to tuck, okay? So that is a transition bit. So you're gonna ride your horse for however long you can get the message across for communication with the transition bit. 
And once you get it off the leg aids, okay, whether it be your hip, your legs, whatever your, your leg aids are, then you're gonna not have to use this, okay? You moved up to your final step, which is gonna be a Western bit. Western bit being a grazing bit, a curved bit, all that wrapped up into something like this. You're still gonna have your split reins, just like everything else was. And now you got a straight bar, and I'm not gonna get in. It doesn't have to have a port on it. It could be anything that looks like this, okay? So you've already taught your horse neck rein by that, them stages. You've taught them when you pull on here, it means something, but you're putting pressure down on top of the head. You're using the same thing back here, okay? Underneath the chin groove, and you got a lot of vertical flexion. You got a lot of whoa, you got a lot of stop, but hopefully you got quiet hands, okay? But this is the final stage of the cow puncher and I'm not, once again, going to get into 1,000 bits that they have. I just want you to get the broad stroke spectrum of the transitions from A all the way down to this bit right here, okay? So A, B, C, D to E, okay? Those are different transitions that you're going to go through, all right? Uh, so I hope that answers the questions a little bit broad stroke once again on the transitions of the cow puncher way of training a horse through different stages. Next, what we're going to talk about is the buckaroo and the California tradition way of transitioning through a horse. <music>
And this uh, picture right here, he's just got the Latigo uh, tie strap on. Uh, and you can see he's using the Makati's in all three stages, a loop uh, set of Makati's if you analyze it. And it's nice because it's got a lead rope, okay? So the next stage after that is normally go to the T-Rain. The T-Rain, what you're going to use generally is a 3 8 set of, of a Bozell, okay? Uh, anything below a half inch normally is a Pencilita, is what they consider it, okay? A pencil Bozell. So you can see in this demonstration right here, they have a setup of the spade bit inside the mouth. Some people use a half braid and then work their way up to a spade bit. You have to play it with it to figure out what you want. Me personally, I like to get right up into a spade bit because that's what I want them to ride in. All right. I'm not even going to try to hack more. Now, not every horse could be a bridle horse. They can't carry a spade. So that's where you figure it out and you transfer over to a half breed at that point or a western bit if it's really bad. <clears throat> Moving on. So a lot of times when you do a two-drain, you'll see that this uh, 3-8 Bozell has the Makati reins, which, oh, by the way, is the same diameter above the reins of the what? This being the reins. It's on top of the Rommel reins because you're using it more for signal and then you're gonna transfer by shaking the, the bottom rein. First you're gonna introduce the top rein, which is Bozell, then you're gonna switch and vibrate the bottom for them slowly transfer what you're doing through the signal bit because you're introducing it with this whole setup. That's called the two rein. So when we'll get more in depth and meaty on it, very put the meat together on this later on through our videos. Once you've got a good understanding, you'll see that this hackamore, okay, this stage right here, okay, what they have is a reins together, okay? You still got the McCarty above the raw males, but they're using it together for the next step. Okay, then the transition, once the horse is starting to understand what the vibration means, what the movement of the hand means inside of its mouth, now you take, in this picture, you take the main Rommel reins, put them above the Makati, or the Makati reins connected to the Bozell. Okay, that's transitioning. And then you're going to ride in for a long time until you're happy, content that you can do everything off your skeleton, off your leg aids, and off just a slight signaling to your horse and then that takes you to the final stage which is right here is up in the bridle you gotta get yourself a bridle horse so traditionally you're gonna use only okay depending on the steps and everything with the two rein i forgot to mention a lot of times you're gonna go to three eighths but it's up to you to go down lighter and lighter to a quarter inch Quarter inch, you might get to the final stage where it's just a 5 16th up in the bridle. You'll see that right here in this drawing, it's missing the 5 16th or whatever size Bozell, Pencilita, okay, around the muzzle. They had the Makati tied right around its neck and the Elmar knot because it's showing everybody that this is a final stage of horse, the most prestigious in that discipline, okay? So with it being like that, you only use it to get off a horse and lead the horse. You don't use it to tie up to anything. That's what your hobbles are for. That's the final stage. You never tie up at this stage, okay? These stages right here with the Makati lead rope. That's just used to lead them. And you're like, well, hmm, that's interesting. Well, why don't you lead by the reins? Because you don't want to mess up the horse's mouth through all these stages. You never lead by the darn spade bit, okay? Now, is that set in stone? That's an individual responsibility. I've seen people lead horses with it. I don't agree with it, but that's what they like. Hey, more power to you. I just know I'm not going to lead it. I'm going to lead with my get-down rope. Savvy? Okay. Now, you're going to say, well, this is California's style of doing everything. What about the buckaroo? 
Well, a lot of buckaroos do this system too, but the only difference is you'll never see in this diagram is a snaffle bit. The snaffle bit normally ends up right after, some people do it right after riding a horse with this uh, a lead rope, who uh, Ray Hunt made famous, you know, because he noticed when the students were in there, they get too damn tight. So he said, you're just gonna ride with a single rein all right which is lead rope connected to a halter so they went tense up there's nothing to do they have to loosen up okay so a lot of times people go straight from the rope halter straight to a snaffle that's one way of getting it or they might go to straight to the three core seven eighths hackmore to a snaffle and then snaffle back up to the five eighths five eighths down to a half inch half inch down okay now depending on the build and the, and the toughness of the horse you might not even have to do a three quarters. You can do a five eight setup, okay, and not do a three quarters. So it's a lot of feel on this path of the direction that you're going with work with a horse, okay. And if you're going to disagree with me, disagree with me. I don't care, okay. That's an opinion. This is my opinion. Enjoy it for what it's worth, because what I'm going to do in the future is go through all these systems on this channel because people have been asking me lately a lot more about this stuff. And I'm happy to oblige them for learning. Happy to oblige them on this stuff. I don't use all this Texas cow puncher stuff, okay, all the time. And you're gonna say, well, Travis, those aren't only the three main disciplines in the West world, that's it. And I agree with you, there's cow punchers everywhere. There's cracker cowboys, the Florida cow hunters down there in Florida. They have a blended style of this stuff here. I'm not going to cover all of them. I'm just going to cover the three main ones that I feel are out there the most I see across the eastern part of the state to the western part of the state. And once again, because of lack of knowledge, lack of education, or because of being progressive, they blend everything. And I don't have a problem with that either. And you're going to be like, well, why not? Well, yes, I like tradition. I love tradition. A lot of times I am a stickler, being cons very conservative, on this stuff okay to me that's an art okay but if i would compare to martial arts and say you just gotta do kung fu you can only do greco roman wrestling you can only do taekwondo those are all traditional arts somewhere along there they're progressive to other stuff kickboxing whatever but recently if you think of the mixed martial arts when horse gracie took brazilian jiu-jitsu took the best out of lost stuff and started whooping all these traditional martial arts, everybody's like, dang, holy smokes, that is awesome. Well, then you got to where the MMA put a time clock and everything, so then all these fighters took the best out of kickboxing, took the best out of freestyle wrestling, took the best out of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, took the best out of boxing, and threw it all together. I'm probably missing some stuff, but you're getting the point. And they made the mixed martial arts, okay? It is progressed, okay? Now, I'm not making fun of traditional karate. I'm not making fun of freestyle wrestling. You can keep it traditional. I think it's fantastic. My job here is not to sell you on any of this stuff. My job is just to educate on this channel. And I'm going to leave it at that. So if you haven't, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and please follow me on this journey of education because I want you to have the knowledge so you become the solution. That's what I got for now. Take care, enjoy your day. Thank you for watching, adios.